everyone. I wanted to welcome you to our web this morning. Um, today we'll be speaking on invoice integration in SAP GTS. Um, invoice integration is one of the newest functionalities in Apple Trade Services. Um, which is accessible in GTL. Um, today, our presenters are Michael and Ashish, both from Crypt. I will let them give their introductions in a moment, but before I do that, um, I'd like to quickly go over some quick housekeeping tips on the slide. On this slide, you'll see a panel for GoToWebinar. Um, if you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to type them into this questions box. Address all questions following the presentation. Um, if we happen to not have time for all of the questions, we'll be sure to follow up with you individually. Um, now I'd like to introduce Crypt for those of you who aren't familiar with us. Um, Crypt is a global key consulting firm. Um, Ashish, would you mind going to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, we are global with offices in North America, uh, throughout Europe, as well as the Pacific. We focus on SAP technologies like S, TM, EWM, uh, HANA, and Fiori. And we have projects are successfully launched in over 100 countries. On the next slide, we will just take a look at some of our thought leadership. Um, the reason I mention this is the webinar today is focused on SAP 11 functionalities. Um, we have recently authored um, two books for a part one and part two, a practical guide for GTS um, for anyone out there who's interested in learning more from a user's perspective, co-authored this with one of our customers, um, but does give you a glimpse on your side of you know, how, how to apply SAP, SAPS uh, within your organization. Um, we've authored other books as well, as well as uh, white papers and case studies, which are available on our website if interested. On this next slide, um, we will quickly just look at some of our products which complement um, SGTS as well as the SAP supply chain suite. Uh, Credibility is a reporting and analytics tool for your supply chain. Cloud allows you to put your SAP supply chain on the cloud with Crypt um, and our uh, partner managed cloud option. Uh, Crypt Connect enables you to use SAP products and the power of SAP, even if you don't have an SAP ERP. And Crypt UX is a usability and user interface tool. And Crypt Concierge is our maintenance and support package. Uh, the next slide just quickly outlines, just at a high level, some of the customers we work with. Um, we work across various industries, and this is a quick snapshot. Uh, at this point, I'd like to hand it over to Michael Shield, your presenter today. Thank you, Killian. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Michael Shields. I'm a GTS consultant uh, with Crypt based in Dublin. Uh, today, as Killian says, I'll talk about some of the relatively new uh, customs invoice integration functionality that's now available in SAP GTS. Uh, I'll be working with my colleague Ashish in the UK, who will, who has access to one of our internal CRIP systems, and we'll do a demo on this system. Uh, I'll start today by giving an introduction to the invoice integration topic and talk about what what it actually means for for you guys as customers. Uh, what's been enhanced from the existing functionality in the standard system, and some of the system requirements and the customizing activities that's needed to get this functionality up and running. So I'll show some of the features, such as the new monitoring features and the new tab in the, <clears throat> new tab in the work list selection screen. Uh, I guess some of you guys may have noticed some of these changes on your systems already, if you're already running a a high enough support pack, and so perhaps you were run, you were wondering what was behind them. So hopefully, hopefully today can uh, can fill in some of the gaps for you. Uh, after this, I'll hand over to Ashish, who has set up some demos in our uh, internal system. 
Uh, as usual, we'll do a walkthrough of the system, uh, an example of invoice integration, and some of the features related to this topic. So what is invoice integration and why is it relevant from a customs and compliance point of view? So firstly, uh, I just want to make it clear when we talk about this new invoice integration functionality, we're talking about uh, invoices integrating into the import process in GTS. So we already have the building document integration with exports in GTS. Uh, but many organizations will use the customs invoice invoice provided by the intercompany supplier or vendor, external vendor within their trade compliance. When submitting a customs declaration, of particular importance is the value data that you include. This is because the value of the goods in the declaration forms the basis for the duty and tax calculations. Now, it can be that the purchasing and scheduling agreements can contain a different value from what you're actually billed for a product. And I guess that's what the what the the cornerstone of what this new uh, functionality is trying to is trying to to fix. So, the new invoice integration functionality aims to give to give customers the possibility to bridge that gap by using the invoice instead of the purchasing documents as the as the basis for the value determination. So, technically, in GTS now we have a new customs invoice object, which was not available before. And this can be used to form the basis of the value of goods in the GTS declaration. Invoices can be passed to GTS directly from ECC via RFC or from an external system, or they can be created directly in GTS itself. So in terms of system requirements, uh, the functionality comes with GTS 11 support pack six, uh, and support pack 30 for the GTS for the GTS plugin on the ECC side. I have mentioned here some of the notes which you can reference specific to this functionality. You can find these, of course, on the uh, on the service marketplace. Uh, and I've also included here the the support packs that will be that are in that we're running on our internal test systems today, where we're going to do the demo. So I want to talk a little bit about the technical changes that I'm provided with this new functionality. So SAP have provided an API that uh, I've included here on this slide, which can be used for the invoice integration. In general, they have provided, I would say, a basic architecture for the customs invoice integration functionality. This function module can be used to integrate the varying and the varying commercial invoice processes and needs that can differ from company to company. Currently, SAP provide an out-of-the-box integration for the intercompany billing scenario. In this case, you can save your intercompany billing document in ECC, and the ECC system will remotely call and create the invoice object in GTS, and then you can use this invoice object in the import process. So it may be that the commercial invoices are coming from outside the ERP system, and by triggering this API, you can still uh, integrate them into the into the declarations. Uh, I've also mentioned here a body that uh, that you you would want to look at if you want to overwrite some of the standard fields or map some new custom fields into into the invoice. So SAP have provided a standard web service. So we're not going to talk in too much detail about this today, but uh, we're going to focus more on the ECC integration. But uh, I just wanted to include this for your information. They've provided a, an S, a standard web service, which can be used where customers want to integrate external invoices into their import process. So mostly today we'll be looking at the ECC integration, but this is an example of another scenario which can be used or can be considered within within this new functionality. Uh, as you can imagine, with this, uh, a flexible approach is needed. And with that in mind, there's some additional configuration uh, that needs to be performed. So in this, in these customizing tasks uh, accessible from the menu, you can map your partner IDs and roles to GTS. You can map external value types to GTS duty types. And then you can incorporate these into the invoice that's created in GTS. So what do these changes actually look like in the system? Uh, on these slides, uh, I'm showing some of the uh, the new functions that are related to, to this topic. Uh, the invoice tab has been introduced. Uh, you can see this uh, in, the import, in, in the import section of the GTS menu. Uh, 
So I guess the philosophy is similar to to what you uh, what we what we all know from the sales and purchasing documents, which are replicated to create customs documents in GTS. So now we have invoices that are replicated from an external system, and these are creating GTS uh, a GTS customs invoice object. So whatever invoices have been transferred or transferred or created in the system, you can go to the go to these monitoring features. You can find them easily. You have all your usual filter criteria. For example, if you wanted to pull up invoices for a particular foreign trade organization, you can do it. For a particular legal unit, you can do it. Or for a particular creation date or uh, created by a user, you can you can do that from here. Uh, additionally, if you wanted to edit or adjust the invoice data, you can access access it from here and edit the document directly from here. And at the bottom of the screen, as I've already mentioned, uh, you have the possibility to manually create uh, customs invoices directly in GTS. So in this case, you'll be given a, a blank template invoice that, that needs to be completed uh, directly in GTS. So I guess that's similar to uh, a creation of a manual declaration in GTS, a function that's uh, that's been in GTS since the beginning, I think. And on the next slide, uh, this is what the invoice object actually looks like in GTS. So this is the header level of the of the invoice document. As you can see, you have the fields such as the external invoice number, the foreign trade org, inco terms, part number information, currency data, and an item overview with item specific data. And similarly, similarly at item level, you'll find the data associated with just the items such as the materials, the quantities, the units of measure. In the middle here, you'll see you have the proof of origin. So I just wanted to just mention that briefly. So this allows you to maintain the proof of origin directly in the customs invoice. Uh, if you integrate this invoice into an import declaration, uh, the system will automatically trigger a preference document type to be incorporated into the declaration. So you also you have a little bit more customizing to do in terms of the document proposal configuration of GTS, but I just wanted to, to mention that briefly. And here we have the import work list transaction before goods receipt and a new tab to filter by the invoice number is present. So uh, as of now, the function for invoice integration is sta in standard is relevant only for the before goods receipt process. As most of you know, when you create an import declaration, you do so from the work list. Uh, the work list is, 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 built, uh, is built on import relevant transactional activity in ECC. So traditionally customers would be using the purchase order or the inbound deliveries. But now we have this new customs invoice tab. Once you've selected external, uh, data in the external invoice field, uh, if there is corresponding data found, the system will take you to the same screen as you would have before. Uh, the screen has been slightly enhanced to include some of the invoice relevant fields. Uh, so in case you select via the invoice, you're choosing to use the invoice as the leading object in the import declaration instead of the purchasing documents. So in this example, the screen, uh, you can see that the number ending in 486 is the feeder system intercompany billing documents and the number ending in 007 is the GTS invoice object reference that has been created in GTS. Uh, and most of the other details are uh, as, you, as you will be aware already. So when you create an invoice uh, from, when you create an import declaration from an invoice, uh, the declaration itself does not look hugely different as, as you would imagine. A couple of changes are at header level. Uh, the external invoice number is updated in the invoice tab and the external invoice number is also available in the placement tab. But I guess what I've mentioned already, a more subtle but important distinction is that the declaration will have the customs values from the invoice in this case. So the customs values that you've actually been billed and therefore you're creating a declaration in GCS that accurately reflects the financial transaction that's taken place. Uh, in the next slide, uh, I just wanted to to mention that uh, just a little bit of uh, a little bit of information about a function. So when you cancel, when you create a, an invoice in GTS, if you cancel the invoice in ECC, the system recognizes this and, and marks the reversal the reversal flag in GTS. So 
so what what configuration is needed to get uh, to get this invoice functions up and running? So in the next few slides, I'll talk briefly about the main configuration points that you should be aware of. So firstly, you have to maintain your customs invoice document type in GTS. So in here we have we've created an invoice an invoice document type called Z invoice. And in the demo that we will show you today, you will see the invoice that we're that we're dealing with have this have this document type. Uh, by the way, these customized activities are all accessible from the main GTS the main GTS menu, as you would imagine. Uh, then in the note just underneath that. Uh, you can assign any additional duty types that you want to incorporate into the customs invoice object. So this is a little bit like the your duty structure that you'll be aware of in the import and export declarations. So the way this works is that any values that are, are available for for duty types that are part of the customs invoice structure and part of the import declaration procedure will be assigned to any uh, import declaration created from from that invoice. Yeah, and in this slide, I'm showing where you map the business document category to the GTS invoice document types. So in today's case, we're looking at an intercompany integration from ECC. And here you can see we've mapped this document type appropriately here on this step. And finally, on ECC side, so this is the first three customizing steps were on GTS, and this is this is on ECC. On ECC, we have to make the activation to transfer the customs documents for customs invoice. So without this, the system will not know that the intercompany billing document is supposed to call the function module to create the, the customs invoice on GTS. So obviously a very important setting for, for the integration. Okay, so before I pass to uh, Ashish, I just wanted to maybe just a quick summary of the process flow that we're going to look at today in ECC. So the, the scenario is a, a flow with the goods the, where a company is buying goods from an intercompany entity in a foreign country. And therefore, the import of the goods needs to be filed via an import declaration in the country where the goods are received. Uh, the purchase order and the cross company inbound deliver delivery are created in ECC and replicated to GTS. So no difference there. Uh, as I'm sure you'll know, you have various GTS compliance services that, are, that can be active on the purchasing document. And traditionally, these are the documents that, that you would use to form the basis of the import declaration. So now we have the invoice integration function that we've talked about today. So this allows the subsequent intercompany billing document that is created in ECC to be replicated to GTS. To be incorporated into the into the import declaration, and on the right hand side, as I've as I've already mentioned, uh, you you can also incorporate manually created invoices created directly in GTS into into this flow. So uh, with that in mind, uh, Ashish has access to our internal test system, and I believe he set up some some demos which are hopefully hopefully ready to go. So Ashish, I, uh, I'll just pass over to you now. Maybe you can give uh, a quick introduction and then go ahead and go to the demo. Hey, hi all. Uh, I am Ashish Galchania and I've been working with Kirit uh, for the last three years. And uh, now I will go to SAP system and we'll start this process. So, as uh, Michael has rightly uh, pointed out on this intercompany stock transfer order process, so we have already created one intercompany stock transfer purchase order, uh, as you can see on my screen. This is a vendor we have set up as a US company code vendor. And we are receiving this part 01-1119-A in Berlin plant, that's in Germany company code. So this is how we have set up this intercompany stock transfer purchase order. And for this intercompany stock, we have created an outbound delivery. That's a replenishment cross company outbound delivery. And uh, we can see here the plant is 320 and from storage location 0002. That's our US plant and storage location which is delivering to this ship to a party assigned to our Germany plant. 
So we have already created this uh, purchase order and outbound delivery, and uh, we will do the last step in ECC. That's the uh, creation of intercompany billing document. So I will open a transaction code VFO one, and I will be selecting the billing type IV. Company billing. I will just save this document so that uh, it will create a billing document, and this billing document will generate a customs invoice document in GPS system. So what we can do now, we can copy this billing document and uh, go to GPS system. system but uh, let me just walk through the transaction code so we have SAP GTS area menu as uh, Michael has uh, mentioned in previous slides and then we can go to customs management import area at import area we can see this new tab invoices uh, so this is the addition in this uh, current uh, latest service pack from this invoices tab we have uh, there are three transition codes and one of the transition code is display customs invoices from this monitoring transition code we can use our ecc invoice number as a reference document to find our gts customs invoice document number i will execute it and then it displays our gts customs invoice document number that is ending with uh, 132. I can open this document in a display mode. And uh, as we have mentioned, this header level fields, like we have this ECC customs invoice number, currency, INCO terms, and FT organization, which is importing invoicing party, vendor for import at header level. And uh, we can also see the customs value that's coming directly from our customs invoice. So that is the addition here and it, it has a lot of advantage for us because it is coming directly from our intercompany billing. And at item level, we can see more on these details. So I can open this item level. And these details, uh, as Michael has mentioned on our previous PPT, we have product numbers, quantities, gross weight, net weight, and country of origin. So we have most of the important details are available in this customs invoice. And all this data will be copied to our import declaration when we will refer this customs invoice as a reference document. But before I create import declaration, I want to show you one more functionality which uh, we just mentioned about reversal. You know, there, there are many possibilities uh, due to some reasons we have to cancel this billing document and it can be like a manual error or data error due to so many reasons and for considering that possibility we have one functionality when we cancel the billing document intercompany billing document in ecc system then how it impacts our gtl customs invoice document so we will see that so let's cancel this billing document in vf11 transaction code I will save it. So my invoice document, which I just created, has been now cancelled. I will go back to GTS system and I will check my customs invoice to see what is the impact on this when we cancel the company billing document. So in general tab, uh, we can see here, there is a one checkbox here and uh, our customs invoice reversal. This checkbox is selected when we cancel our ECC intercompany billing document. And this is very important functionality. You know, uh, this gives us a, like, you know, visibility that for this customs invoice, user has already canceled the intercompany billing document. So 
we are not supposed to refer these customs in voice document to create an import declaration because there is a possibility that the user may be changing some data like gross weight, net weight, values, or some country of origin, anything. He will be changing in size order and he'll be creating again outbound delivery and again intercompany billing document. So we will not be referring this document because it's cancelled. So we want to show this functionality. This is available and so it, we should know about this. Now I will go back to EC system and create once again intercompany billing document. So that we'll have a new customs invoice document number and that we will refer to create import declaration. So I will use transaction code VF01. And that is my outbound delivery number. I think, let me see. Outbound delivery number is. I use the wrong one. So I will select intercompany billing here, billing type. number and this is my inter company billing document type so we have, we have to select a particular intercompany billing type only for this outbound delivery. In case the wrong billing type is selected, then it will not allow us. So I will just save it. So my new intercompany billing document has been generated. And this is the number. Now I will take this number and go to GPS system. And I will use this as an external invoice number instead of the old one. So a new number is ending with 708. So now this new intercompany uh, stock transfer billing document is has created a customs invoice document in GTS system. Uh, this is the same document uh, which we discussed for same header details and uh, item level details. Now we can use this document and uh, create import declarations. So I can open another time, another screen to show you. Let's do here. So we can come from GTS area me to import customs management import. And uh, as we discussed, you know, this functionality right now has been delivered for the import process, which uh, we, we use to create uh, from peer to good receipt work list. And here we have to give our FPO organization, that's the Germany. And this is a tab, you know, uh, we just discussed on our slides. And this is a new addition in this new functionality. And we can see earlier we used to have uh, purchase orders in bond delivery and customs bill, but now we have customs invoice as a reference uh, number which we can use to create an import declaration. We can give here our ECC billing document number and execute. So this is our worklist entry and uh, in this worklist entry, we can see here, this is our ECC intercompany billing document number. And uh, this is our 
GTS customs invoice number ending with 133. And uh, this is our intercompany stock transfer purchase order. The other details are also like the same, which we used to get with reference to purchase order in Mondelez, like quantities, product numbers, and uh, currency and all. And now we can select this worklist entry. This worklist entry is coming with reference to our customs invoice billing document. And we can create an declaration. So you can select yes here. And it will show one more pop up with the declaration number. So this is our declaration number ending with 902. So in this declaration, we can see there is an invoice tab here. And this invoice tab, we have this ECC intercompany billing document number. That's very important. You know, this functionality was not there earlier, but now after upgrading uh, and using this latest uh, service pack and OSS notes, we have this functionality. Our ECC intercompany billing document numbers are directly updated in the declaration when we use the customs invoice as a reference or a worklist entry to create a import declaration. So we have two places where we can see this invoice number. One is at header level in invoice tab and uh, at item level also the placement tab, we can see this invoice number. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, now our value of goods or this uh, Customs value we can update directly from intercompany billing document and we can define our duty framework structure and assign those duty types to our customs invoice. So all the values which are available in the in GTS customs invoice as per the duty framework structure it will be updated in import declaration. So right now we have a uh, assign only value of goods duty types to our customs invoice and that is updating in import declaration. So that's it uh, from my end uh, considering uh, this demo in SCP and GTS system. And uh, now I'm going to hand over this uh, question to Kelly. Thanks, Sashish. Um, at this point, if anyone has any questions, as we mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, you can type them into the questions panel in your GoToWebinar screen. Um, also displayed is some contact information. Um, it's actually my information or uh, the company's um, contact information. So you can reach out um, if you have more specific questions or if you'd like to set up um, a call just to answer uh, more specific scenarios to your organization. Um, Michael and Ashish, it looks like we have a few questions that have come in. Um, so I will read them out loud. Um, the first question is, uh, are there any plans to support the after goods receipt process in GTS with an invoice, or is this already available? I, I can take that one, Kayleen. Yeah, so it's, it's not available currently. Uh, so if you go to the after goods receipt process in GTS you won't see any invoice fields like like what we've like what we've demoed today so I don't know if it's if it's in the pipeline for SAP I'm uh, with a client who has who has via custom development with SAP uh, they are, they have a new after goods receipt work list transaction where they have the invoice integration uh, they have the invoice integration working for that so uh, I guess not yet not yet in standard I'm not sure if it's in the plan but it's possible with some with some more development work okay thank you um, another question here is can API be used for intercompany invoices created with reference to sales orders uh, I can take this one. Yeah, definitely uh, we can use the API uh, to create uh, intercompany billing with reference to uh, sales order intercompany billing document. And uh, I know this because uh, currently we are running a project in how 
uh, for one of our esteemed customer and uh, they also have same kind of requirement where they have sales process and intercompany billing and with reference to that intercompany billing we want to create a customs invoice uh, a document in the GTS system so that's absolutely possible and uh, it will require a little bit of uh, uh, customization and uh, development in ECC system yeah got it. okay thanks uh, another question here is uh, does this process work for external vendor shipments so <clears throat> So I've, I've mentioned some of the uh, I mentioned in the slide some of the the options that uh, that are available. So they have the web service for for as one means of integration integrating your internal or your external vendor invoices. Uh, we also have uh, the possibility of uh, when you post your vendor invoices on ECC uh, to get them to to come across. So. Uh, the same client that I spoke of earlier is uh, is integrating their their VIM processes in, in ECC to create the to create the invoice objects uh, in GTS. So yes, it is possible, but it's not a uh, it's not a and like like the uh, intercompany scenario that we've discussed today. It's not it's not working out of the box. I'd say it's probably the best way of, of describing it. Yeah, and uh, I want to add here, you know, one more point here. So recently, we did uh, one of our uh, one of our customer like uh, uh, there is a project requirement, and uh, our customer uh, was creating uh, this intercompany billing of or vendor invoices outside ECC system. So what we did, you know, uh, we had uh, some kind of uh, interfaces for that external billing uh, system, and we used that uh, input from that. In, from interface to ECC system, and we use this API to trigger a customs invoice in the customs invoice. So what I'm trying to say, it is also possible in case you are not creating your intercompany billing document or vendor invoices in ECC system, but if you are using your external system, you can always use your external system, interface with this given API and create customs invoice in GTS system. So that also we have done recently for one of our esteemed customers. So just I wanted to share with you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Um, let's see. Another question here is: According to SAP AG, the invoice is the FI document created after SD billing document. This functionality is taking the SD billing or FI document. It's the uh, SD. The, uh, yeah, Michael, Sorry, go please ahead. go ahead. So this is the this is the SD this is the SD billing document. Yes. So I guess traditionally or more the normal process or the the usual process is that a SD billing document would create an export declaration in GTS. But we're kind of flipping the intercompany process here is that we're flipping the intercompany document to create an import an import document. But uh, we're talking in general we're talking here about vendor invoices so external vendor invoices that are coming that are coming into the system okay another question is how will batch management be handled if this is applicable one invoice with two lines in the same item So, so far, you know, this functionality uh, has not been uh, developed for batch management process, but uh, I believe, you know, we can uh, develop, we, we have API, uh, we can have that batch fields and uh, from the invoice uh, baddies, we'll have to fast the batch numbers and put in uh, our at customs invoice level in GTS system. But to be frank, yeah, this functionality is not given by SAP yet but it can be developed. Okay. Another question is, any plans to support third-party vendor invoice like after MIRO and ECC is moved to GTS? Uh, so I think I briefly mentioned that in one of my previous answers. So uh, it's being done already by some customers, but uh, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be incorporated as a standard as a standard feature in GTS. 
Um, a few more questions. Um, uh, I think we actually, there's quite a few more questions. So if we don't get to your questions, we'll follow up with you um, in emails. Um, let me just take two more here. Um, and then um, please feel free to reach out to us also if you need follow-up information. Um, the last two questions I'll take is, one is, is it possible to combine customs invoice and inbound delivery in the same customs declaration? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so that's very much possible. In fact, that's, that's I guess, what will, what will happen in the, in the majority of cases. So, so when we create, uh, I hope it was clear, I hope it was clear from, from our demo. So when we, when we incorporate the invoice into the, into the import declaration, the, the declaration is, is not based solely on the, on the data from the invoice. So we always need the purchasing documents, uh, the preceding purchasing documents to be in the work list as well. So uh, for sure, for sure, the data from the inbound delivery, uh, if it's if it's been if it's been created, will be uh, will be incorporated into the imp, imp, into the import declaration as well. Okay, thank you. And um, the question here is the logistics. Uh, the logistics costs posted in GTS are transferred to ECC for costing allocations. I'm not sure on that one, Ashish. So logistic costs, uh, it, it generally we are fetching this uh, from like a purchase order or from our intercompany billing document to GTS system. So what's the question here? Uh, can, can you just... I, I think it was it was asking if if that was possible. So it seems like I guess the answer is yes. But um, maybe we can just follow up in an email to make sure we answer yeah. these questions. Yeah. The logistic um, question in from like intercompany billing document or from purchase order to GTS system, and whatever reference document we use, like a, to create an import declaration, either it's a purchase order, inbound delivery, or right now now we have a new functionality, customs invoice. We can use that uh, logistic cost to fetch in import declaration. Yeah. Okay. And let me just throw in one last one. Um, do we need to use the real SD billing document, or does it also work with pro forma billing document? This can be set up as a pro forma billing document as well. Uh, so far, uh, I've not seen any challenge. So one of some of my colleagues uh, they are using uh, performa billings because some customers they don't want to use multiple billing documents and uh, they want to trigger export declaration as well as uh, customs invoice using performa invoice but you know we'll have to tweak a little bit in the api so in the standard api to work to like you know maintain both the functionality because when we use performa invoice we also expect system to create export declaration. And now we have this customs invoice functionality as well with reference to uh, billing document. Okay, great. Um, thank you everyone for joining in for all of your questions. As I mentioned, we will follow up in emails just to make sure that all these were answered um, fully and to see if you had any further questions. Um, thank you Ashish and thank you Michael for presenting. And um, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day. Thanks, all of you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Thanks guys. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.